Mm, hello. So welcome to our study of integral equations. So um, we'll be beginning with lesson one. And in lesson one, we'll be talking about um, what integral equations are, one or two things about it. So we'll go through the intro. Then after that, we'll also take some examples of integral equations. Okay, so that's going to be the objective of lesson one. So what's an integral equation? So an integral equation, mostly shortened as IE, is an equation in which an unknown function appears under one or more signs of integration. So that's how we define what an integral equation is. Okay, so it's an equation in which an unknown function appears under one or more signs of integration. So an example of an integ integral equation is the Laplace equation. And I know we are all very familiar with the Laplace equation. Okay, so you can see that with the Laplace equation, this is the unknown function, phi of u. And this unknown function appears under an integral sign here. So it makes the Laplace equation an integral equation. OK. So let's take the general form of an integral equation. So the general form of an integral equation is given by what we have here. So y of x is equal to lambda integral from a to b this then y of t dt plus f of x okay so that happens to be the general type of the general form of an integral equation so right now let's just try to mm, know what the various components stand for okay so this y of x here happens to be our unknown function. You know, this is the unknown function, and it's also appearing under the integral sign, okay? Then this k of x t happens to be the kernel. Then a b happens to be the limits of integration. Then our f of x here happens to be the free term or the forcing term. Then this lambda is what we call the investigative, oh sorry, the investigative parameter. Okay. So we just got to know the general form of an integral equation and what the various components stand for. So the next thing we are going to do is to define them. So what's the unknown function? What's the kernel? The limits of integration, the free term or forcing term, the investigative parameter. Okay. So the kernel is a part of the function this. And it is referred to as the kernel. So it is a known continuous function defined in this square. Okay, so we have this square here, right? So k of x t is always inside. Let me change my marker. So it is always inside um, this square. It's any continuous function within this square, okay? Then the free term. So f of x is the free or forcing term in the equation. It is also known in continuous. So the free term is also a continuous function. Then the unknown function, so that's the function y of x we want to solve for. And the limits, so the limits are, are a of x and b of x. Okay. Then the investigative parameter. So lambda is introduced to determine variations of the problems or solution as lambda is allowed to vary. So sometimes when we don't um when we have a fixed lambda 
a solution may not exist okay so we're trying to vary the lambda so that a solution may exist okay so that's the investigative parameter for you lambda okay so you've talked about what an integral equation is examples of this and we said the laplace transform is an example of an integral equation you talk about the general form and the various components okay so let's solve these examples to make things the understanding even clearer okay so he says in the following integral equations determine if any the so <coughs> i so the constants or the limits of integration i i the kernel i i i the investigative parameter the free term and the unknown function okay <coughs> so um we have this integral equation here so you know it's an integral equation because the unknown function is appearing under one sign of what integration okay so when we take this our uh, integral equation comparing it to the general form that's y of x equals lambda integral from a to b everything that we have here so you can see that the kernel this corresponds to this exponential function here so that means this is our kernel then our constant a b or the limit of integration is from what zero to pi so we have them here <coughs> then lambda here yeah, the coefficient is what one so that means our investigative parameter lambda is one so the unknown function is y of x in the free term or the forcing term is s squared okay so that's s squared that means to be the free term or the forcing term okay so let's take a second example we have y of x equals 1 over 2 s cubed plus integral from 0 to 1 x dy of t dt so comparing it to the general form which is y of x equals f of x plus lambda okay so that means that our kernel is st our free term or forcing term of f x is 1 over 2 s cubed our known function y of x constant 0 to 1 and the investigative parameter is also 1 here okay so <coughs> you can check that out and see okay so um this happens to be everything we want to do in lesson one so in lesson one we introduce you to an integral equation the general form of it and how to determine the various components okay so in lesson two we'll be talking about classification of integral equations just like how we can classify differential equations we can also classify integral equations okay so see you in lesson two